Well, it's such a joy to come back on this uh, pulpit here to share God's message. Over the past few weeks, we have been uh, having uh, sermons which cover the theme of going missioner. That means going forth and preach a gospel to the world and on church growth. Well, our senior pastor Thomas kicked off the series with his very uplifting, upbeat message on what? Less upsize. Okay? And then followed by our uh, <coughs> Pastor Lawrence Lee, who talked about how to connect relationally. Then we have the topic on love practically by our Pastor Dennis Lee. And then recently we have this topic on pray, pray faithfully by our very own uh, Pastor Regan. And this morning I'm really privileged to wrap up this whole series with the topic on share boldly. Let's commit this time to the Lord. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we come humbly before your throne of grace to seek your word for us this morning. I pray that the words of my mouth and meditations of our hearts are pleasing to you. That the words that come from, from my mouth are anointed by the Holy Spirit. Lest those words which are not from you be scattered as shaft to the four winds. May your Rima words go forth and not return to you void, but will accomplish what? you desire and achieve the purpose for which you sent forth. In Jesus' name, Amen. Now, allow me to start sharing uh, all this message by telling you a true story about this gentleman called John Harper. He was one of the 2,000 odd passengers who were on the ill-fated maiden voyage of the ship Titanic. Now, most of us know that about 1,500 people perished because Titanic sank after it hit the iceberg and because of the lack of lifeboats. And uh, John Harper was actually traveling to America at the time to preach in the D.L. Moody Church. On the faithful night, the captain was... Um, Worry and want to keep order among the passengers who were crowded on the deck of the sinking ship. So he approached John Harper and asked him to help to keep peace among the passengers. Now, at that time, the women and the children were given priority to get into the lifeboat. And you could imagine the pandemonium, the confusion, the noise uh, that go on on deck. How many of you have seen the movie Titanic? Oh, quite a number of you. So can you recall the scene where the women, children, everybody is crowding, you know, on the, <laughs> on the deck. And then the husband were waving goodbye to the wives and children who are being placed in the lifeboat and the lifeboat being lowered down to the sea. And the children, all that, were crying in the boat, waving goodbye, yelling, and so on. Now, imagine this scene, that John Harper was kissing his six-year-old daughter, Nana, goodbye, before placing her safely into the lifeboat. Shortly after all the lifeboats were gone, the mighty ship started to sink and throwing off all the remaining passengers into the icy Atlantic Ocean. But during this horrific tragedy, God was at work. You see, John Harper wasn't afraid of dying. He was prepared to 
meet his maker face to face. But he has this burning passion. And that is, he wanted other people to know about his Lord and Saviour. While in the icy water, as death was lurking around him, he shouted to a man in darkness, asking him, Are you saved? No, the man replied. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you shall be saved. Harper screamed as he struggled in the dark, cold water. Now the man was drifted apart for a while, but current brought both of them back. Weak, exhausted, frozen. A dying harper yelled once more, Are you safe? No! Harper repeated once again, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you shall be saved. And with that, he sank into his watery grave. Now, this is an extreme example of sharing the gospel boldly, okay? But we as Christians have inside our DNA this desire to share the gospel. In Romans... Chapter 10, verse 12 to 15. Paul gave a very simple reason why, as believers, we share the gospel. Let me read through this. <clears throat> for there is no distinction between Jew and Greek, for the same Lord over all is rich to all who call upon Him. For whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. How then shall they call on him in whom they have believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach unless they are sent? And it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the gospel of peace, who bring glad tidings of good things. Now, simply put, Paul is telling us, Whoever call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. But for one to be able to call on the Lord, he has to believe. But to believe, he has first to hear. In order to hear, he needs someone to tell him the message. And for the person to tell the message, the person has to be sent. You know, in the ancient days, most, uh, in fact, a lot of people are illiterate. That means they, are, they can neither read nor write. So, oral communication, the spreading of the message by word of mouth, is the norm. And let's remember the very last words our Lord Jesus said to us before he was taken back to the Heavenly Father, as recorded in Matthew 28, verse 19 to 20, what we commonly call the Great Commission. Now Jesus said, Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to end of the age. Now it's very clear the, the word, the verb go, is an active word. It doesn't mean that we all remain seated in the church, enjoying the disciple making program, uh, having wonderful fellowship with one another, and enjoying all the church activities. The, com the word here from Jesus is to go. That means get off your butt and go out and share the gospel with those believers outside. And uh, the word here, all the nation. The nations here actually refer to people's group. That means the different tribes, different races. 
It's not the geopolitical definition we are so familiar with, it's the definition of nation. All of us as followers of Christ have been commanded to share the gospel. In fact, Hudson Taylor wrote hundred, about 100 years ago. He said, the Great Commission is not an option to be considered. It's a command to be obeyed. Now, this brought to my mind uh, some uh, encounters I have with some dear brothers in Christ who say to me that, oh, I'm not gifted with the gift of evangelism. Therefore, I don't share the gospel. Or, well, I'm not highly educated, I can't share. Or, I'm too old to share. Or, I'm of a lower social status than the someone I'm trying to share the gospel, so I can't share it. And there are even brothers who are so into the study of gospel, especially on this eschatology or the theology of end time. They spend so much attending classes, seminars, conferences, watching all the YouTube videos, and so on, that they simply don't have time to do outreach or to be involved in evangelistic um, activities. Now, there's nothing wrong studying about end time and all that, but not to the exclusion of obeying the command from our Lord Jesus to go and make disciples of nations. We as believers should be ready, willing, able to share the gospel. Because the gospel is the good news, good news of Jesus Christ dying on the cross for our sins and his re resurrection as a conquest of death, thereby giving us eternal life and giving us a freedom and a relationship with our God. If we truly know the joy of living a life in forgiveness, if we understand the heartbeat of God, the concern for lost souls, if we are burdened with the knowledge that people who do not have a relationship with God or with uh, Jesus will be forever separated from Him in a place the Bible calls hell. If we truly believe that we as Christians have the answers to life's problem, to the cure for spiritual deadness, then it's only natural that we should be able to share boldly the gospel with those who have a need to hear it. But some of you may ask, well, why, why then a lot of Christians are so shy of sparing, uh, sharing the gospel? You know, why are they so reluctant or not able to share the gospel, especially with those close to them? Now, I was suggest some few hindrances. We can go through them. First is the absence of prayer. Now, for a long time, when I was a young Christian, I struggled in sharing the gospel with others. The harder I tried, the more frustrated I became. It was later that I learned that when sharing the good news about Jesus, we shouldn't just depend on our own power or intellect. In fact, if we share freely, boldly in the, with the Holy Spirit, which will guide us through our prayers, the Holy Spirit will empower us. A good example is in Acts 
chapter 4, verse 23 to 31. If you have the Bible, can turn through the passage. Now, this passage talks about when Peter and John were together with other uh, believers praying for the Holy Spirit to help them. And they ended up sharing God's word with boldness. In verse 31, it says, After they prayed, the place where they were meeting was shaken, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke the word of God boldly. So now I will pray a short prayer before I share. Because I realize that it's not my own ability, my own, own eloquence to convict or convince the person receiving the message. It's the Holy Spirit at work on that person receiving the message. So any impact or transformation that takes place in the person is something beyond my capability. This is a work that's been done by the Holy Spirit. So now I put less pressure on myself as far as this uh, sharing the gospel is concerned. Next, the lack of knowledge. Well, sometimes we feel inadequate, right, in sharing the gospel because we have not been taught. But actually, think of it. The message of salvation is very simple, very straightforward. The only way a person can be saved was not by their own good works, not by the things they do or a price they pay, but by believing in Jesus and receiving the gift of salvation, the gift of righteousness that He offers to anyone who believes. So it's a matter of just receiving this gift of salvation from Jesus, confessing our sin, repenting our sin, and accepting Jesus as the Savior. So that is the most simple way to put across the message of salvation. Well, um, to help you, there are actually tracks available for you to share when sharing the gospel. Uh, one of the tracks, the four spiritual law, is one which I find very useful. But I have others here as example. This one. What single event in human history had the power to split time? Okay. From emptiness to satisfaction, and you are a VIP. These are all in English. This one here. Have you heard about the greatest story ever told? This is bilingual, both in Chinese and in English. Now, by the way, all these tracks are available in the church. So you need any of these tracks, just check with the church. And also our uh, brother Ricky. Very generous. He's the one who gave a lot of these tracks away. And then we have this, uh, where can you find true love? In both English and Chinese. Zhen Ai, He Chu Xun. Alright? And I like this one. This one in bilingual also, English and Chinese. And it's full of cartoons, drawings. So when you share, it's step by step. When you share, it's very easy. Just follow the picture and share the story of salvation. And we also have this uh, 12 blessing, Zhu Fu. This is when you try to pray for pre-believers what the blessing they need, then you pray with them and then share the gospel of salvation. Now, if we wish to boost your confidence in evangelism, you may join one of the 
street evangelism group, like a, a soul a day, where they will train you and coach you to how to evangelize, especially to strangers. Or you are reaching out to someone you are still not ready to, to or you feel you are not ready to, to share the gospel. Then there's option for you, and that is to invite him to join an Alpha program. Now, Alpha is a friendly, non-threatening platform to reach out to be believers. So your friend will be in good uh, hands if they attend the Alpha program. But better still, sign up to be a facilitator in our Alpha program. Because through that, you'll learn the ways, the skill set, to share the gospel in a friendly, non-threatening way. Next, the type of friends. <clears throat> some of you may have the experiencing of witnessing to someone uh, who is not only resistant to your message, but who is very argumentative. Everything you want to tell him will argue with you. Every point of faith in, Christ, in Christian, uh, Christianity, he will question you. Now, I, ha I have such a friend. Uh, for the longest time, I can remember I've been witnessing to him. And he would come up with a full range of arguments uh, why uh, there's no God or why uh, he can't believe uh, to be, uh, why Christians are so foolish to accept all this story about uh, resurrection and so on. But in a way, I'm grateful to this friend of mine. Because of the way he reacted to my sharing, he helped me to sharpen my defenses of my faith and prompted me to really be serious in studying apologetics, that is the defense of Christian faith. But over the years, actually, I learned it's not my goal to win arguments with such friends of mine. But it's just that my role is to just simply share the message of salvation and pray that the Holy Spirit will work on the person hearing this message. Because conviction and transformation belongs to the Holy Spirit. And also God may have the timing for this person to accept Jesus Christ. As in John uh, chapter 15, 16, Jesus told us that we did not choose him, but he chose us and appointed us. So you have a problem with listening to such a, you know, argumentative friend. Just continue to pray for him, share the gospel, and continue to show the love of Christ in your life that will have an impact on him. Now, fourth, the fear of man. Now, fear of man is common if you still are depending on your own ability to witness and share the gospel. Now, the, over, the only way to overcome this anxiety is to rely on the Holy Spirit to do the conviction and transformation. Don't just rely on your own eloquence or abilities. After all, we are bringing souls to Christ. And this is a spiritual battle. And the devil never liked it. He never wanted to lose those under his control to our Lord Jesus. In Proverbs 29, 25, it says, Fear of man will prove to be a snare. But whoever trusts in the Lord is kept safe. Now, the problem of rejection. Well, this is a common anxiety among believers. If you're honest, you know that rejection can be quite hurtful. Right? It can be quite a profound impact on you. Especially when you try your best to share and especially with someone close to you and dear to you. 
Well, in my early Christian life of sharing the gospel, rejection was something which took me a long time to overcome. The negative emotion that stirred in me, the feeling of inadequacy, the feeling of failure, the feeling that, well, maybe I've not done enough. But as I said, now I know the conversion of person is not my respons responsibility. My role is just as a channel for good news to share with those who have a need to hear it. And then leave the conversion, conviction to the work of the Holy Spirit. Well, just think of it. If a person comes to accept Christ as his personal saviour, it is actually a miracle. So, sometimes it's God timing for the person to come to know him. So, all you need to do is, after sharing, just keep on praying for the person and leave the Lord in his own timing for the miracle to happen. Well, maybe allow me to share some uh, personal experience this. It took my sister and I more than 30 years of prayer and witnessing to bring my father and mother to Christ. Now, the turnaround came when my father suffered a severe stroke and was in hospital that was some 30 years ago. He was in hospital, in the ICU for about a week. And during this time, my mother challenged my sister, my elder sister, who's the first one to know Christ in my family, who had been witnessing to my mom and sharing the gospel and so on. So at that time, my mother turned to my sister and said, if your God is really that great, let him heal your father. Then I will believe. Well, we couldn't have prayed more fervently for my father during that time. And lo and behold, he was moved out from the ICU about seven days, but still in a coma but moved to a normal ward. And a few days later, he woke up. He was half paralyzed, but he lived on for another 10 years or so. Praise the Lord. So, to cut the long story short, my mom accepted Christ. and brought my father to Christ too. So I learned from this experience, don't worry about rejection. Don't take rejection personally. With every rejection, it should spur you on to greater effort. Number six, the trap of shame. Sometimes we are tended to hide our identity as a Christian, especially in a secular work environment. I recall when I was younger working, I was very shy to identify myself as a Christian. Why? So that I can fit in into the work environment. It's a secular work environment. At the time, I didn't appreciate what Paul says in Romans 1.16, when he said, I am not ashamed of the gospel, because it is the power of God for the salvation of everyone who believes, first for the Jew, then the Gentile. At the time, I didn't realize that if someone is ashamed to share the gospel, you are actually trapped by the enemy because it means one soldier less in the battlefield to fight for lost soul. 
Since then, I learned to overcome this sense of shame by just building up my faith in the Lord, by growing intimacy with Him, and truly have a sense of His presence wherever I feel uh, the, sh- the feeling of shame came upon me. What it means is we need to have meaningful, quiet time, prayer time, daily with the Lord. Read His Word daily. Have constant fellowship with fellow brothers and sisters in Christ. And focus our mind on how to live the life of righteousness as directed by the Holy Spirit. We can overcome this sense of shame when we are empowered by the Holy Spirit. It may be helpful you find that you get a, a more mature Christian to be your mentor, to help you out in this as well. Finally, the lack of desire. Many times we are not sharing the gospel because we don't have the desire to do so. We don't have the burning desire. And this lack of desire is due to the faulty relationship we can have with our Lord. As Hudson Taylor said, the Great Commission is not an option. It's a command for each believer. Well, other than sharing the gospel face-to-face with your friend, you can use, make use of tracks like this. Okay? But it still requires someone to place this track into the hands of those who need to hear about the gospel. Desire can grow in us, develop in us when we have the right attitude. Okay, where we are walk closer with the Holy Spirit. And we have the burden for lost soul. Just think about it. Wouldn't you be very happy, very enthusiastically sharing with your friends the best place to get Chao Kui Tiao in Singapore? Now, all the more that about sharing the gospel of salvation, of eternal life given by our Lord Jesus with your non-believing friends. Now, reviewing all these uh, few endurances, uh, we can discern a few practical keys to help us in sharing the gospel boldly. Uh, But before we go there, Let's be very clear that the bonus we are talking about is not the same as arrogance. There are some Christians who are rude and arrogant, thinking that this is bonus. But they don't understand the bonus we are talking about is biblical bonus, which comes from having the courage to stand for Jesus when everyone else is against Him. Such bonus come from the Holy Spirit. So we share boldly, but with gentleness and respect. We'll go to the practical keys. The first key is make sure your sharing comes from a consistent and daily prayer life and the daily reading of the Word of God. Now, as we seen in chapter 4 of Acts, the book of Acts, when Peter and John were, who proclaimed the, were proclaiming the gospel before the Sanhedrin, the religious leaders of the Jews at that time. The religious leaders noted the bonus of Peter and John stem from the fact that they spent time with Jesus. Verse 13. The disciples have spent time in the company of God the Son. So too, we need to spend quality time with Jesus. It's not just um, uh, spend one or few minutes to read the Bible or whatever. 
we have to make sure that Jesus is real in your life. It's not in the head. It's not head knowledge. You must have that personal relationship with Him. And that's mean truly making time in your life to pray to Him, to talk to Him, to read His Word. And cut off all those time you, uh, non, uh, time you spend on non-essential things so we have time with Him. This means foregoing the binge-watching of the Korean TV drama or your time spent on social media or endless scrolling through the handphone. Right? Satan wants us to be kept busy because when we are busy, there's a, that means we don't have enough time to do our quiet time, to read the Bible, to pray, and so on. So busy here, B-U-S-Y, can mean being under Satan's yoke. So we have to be very careful. The moment you find yourself too busy to do your quiet time, too busy to read the Bible, that's the time you to check yourself. Are you giving the right time to your Lord and Savior, to your King? Now, the second key is to ask the Lord for discernment as to who to talk to and what to say. And pray for wisdom every day, before the sharing, during the sharing, and after the sharing. Because we are engaged in the spiritual warfare. As Paul say in Ephesians 6.12, our battle is not against flesh and blood. Our battle is against the evil forces, the evil spirit. Well, CMC has started this uh, mobilizing all the members to pray for at least three names that each of us are targeting to bring to Christ. We have committed these names in writing on this ready to harvest cut. Now, we should be praying for these three names, right? With earnestness and with the desire to reach out to all these three names. And uh, I think last week, uh, Reverend Graeber Han suggested that three of us can get together to pray for nine names so that as a group, we can work together to evaluate evangelize to these people. But ultimately, we have to rely on the Holy Spirit to help out in our outreach. Now, the third key is, in order the, to evangelize boldly, we have to continually bathe ourselves in the gospel message of Lord Jesus. Not our own message, not our own gospel. We have, that means we have to share the full gospel, the all aspect of evangelism. Now, the full gospel involves some unpleasant facts of life, and that is about personal sin and God's judgment. This part are important because pre-believers will not be able to grasp life's changing truth of salvation if they don't acknowledge themselves as sinners. I know this aspect is particularly difficult, especially if you are trying to witness to someone close to you or someone who are your senior, like your parents and so on. Now, just let me quickly share a personal story on this. Now, all my siblings and I have been Christian for a long time, except for my eldest brother. I come from a family of nine, three, three boys and six, six girls, and I'm number six. The oldest was my eldest brother. I shared earlier, even when my parents came to know Christ, my eldest brother 
didn't want to have anything to do with it. So a uh, whole family have been sharing the gospel with him, uh, praying for him, but he still remained very stubborn, sticking on to his own atheist belief that there is no God. The stumbling block I realize now is our reluctance to share on personal sins and the judgment of God on all sinners. The reason for our reluctance is because we have so much respect for my eldest brother because he became the most senior person in our family after the passing on of our parents. But the opportunity came when he was seriously ill. Actually, quite suddenly. He used to be a very healthy person, but suddenly he felt very ill. And our Family really pray very hard to the Lord not to take him home until he can respond to the message of salvation. We then started to take a more direct route in sharing the gospel, talk, telling him about his personal sins, telling him the judgment of God which will come and the prospect of spending eternity in hell. I shared with him the message of salvation as well and also left quite a lot of these tracts for him to read. It's only when his condition worsened that he reached out to me with a message to go and see him as soon as possible. Now at that time I was travelling so I can only reach him via the telephone the Holy Spirit impressed on me that this was the last chance for him because the Lord is going to call him home soon. Well, praise the Lord, I was able to lead him in the saying the sinner's prayer. After the phone call, I sent a text message to him summarizing what we uh, talked about over the phone call. And then a few days later, I received the sad news that my brother passed on. My sister-in-law, who, uh, who remained a very staunch Buddhist, uh, insisted on a non-religious ceremony for my brother, including a sea barrier. But somehow I felt peace in my heart. The peace, I think, comes from God. So that I wasn't very active involving in the family discussion on the final uh, funeral arrangement. Now my sister-in-law is my focus for evangelism. Now I learned from this experience that time is short. We have a burden to win the lost soul, especially for those clear, close and dear to us. Don't select. You must go forward and share the good news. Do not delay and continue to pray for the person and, and continue uh, to work on the salvation for this precious soul. We can't wait for the right time. We can't wait for the convenient time. The time is now. In conclusion, we can see that telling someone about the good news about Jesus is really not that difficult. That is if you truly believe it. It's because you are not imposing your own thinking, your own spirituality or your own concept of what is the afterlife and so on. You are simply sharing the truth about God's love for all people and make them understand that they are made in the likeness and the image of God and God wants them to be saved. Therefore, let's go forth boldly proclaiming the gospel to those 
who have need to hear it, we go forth and make disciples of these people believers and baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Now I know my message on sharing gospel is directed to the believers. But there are some of you here who have yet to be believers. You have come to church maybe the first time or have been coming to church a few times but have yet to receive Jesus as your Savior. I'm telling you, God is saying that today is the day. The time is now for you to accept Him as your Savior. Don't hesitate. Don't overthink the whole issue. Come and receive our Lord Jesus as your Savior. In a moment later, we will open up the altar for those who are you who feel the presence of God in your life now that you want to accept Jesus as your personal saviour, do come forward. Our elders, ministry leaders and intercessors will pray with you. Okay? Now let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, thank you for this timely message to remind us to obey the command of our Lord Jesus to go and make disciples of all nations. Help us to be obedient to your command, O Lord. Make us effective channel to share this good news of our Lord Jesus as Saviour to all who need to receive it. Empower us as we boldly share the gospel. In Jesus' name, Amen.